Now up on the Short Time Wrestling Podcast with one of the legends of American wrestling. It is a pleasure to have this guy on the show, Kenny Monday. The uh, Actually, let's even get your title with, with Spire Institute and Academy before I even introduce what you are and who you do. What is your official title these days? My title is um, Director of Wrestling and Head Coach, right? And so I'm kind of got a, a whole uh, two-part series to it. But it's, yeah, just really, really head coach and just kind of director of wrestling. So we'll come back to what Spire is because this is the first time I've had a chance to get you on the show, really ever. Uh, you know, right. we've known each other. We met, uh, I want to say, I think it was 06 Trials is the yep. first time we sat down. And I'm like, yeah, that's Kenny Monday. And we're next thing you know, we're sitting there at lunch. <laughs> And I was running Intermat at the time, and I'm sitting next to right. Meredith Wilson at USA Wrestling, and 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 John John W is there too, and uh, yeah. I think you were helping out at Bishop Lynch at the time, and it was just yep. like so. So wait, who are you? Thanks. And then I said I was with Intermat and Meredith, and John's mm-hmm. like, wait, you two get along? <laughs> it's like, yeah, you know, wrestling people get along, especially in the media. <laughs> but uh, that was one of my early early uh, early in, in introductions to you, and then as. As you do your research and you find out who people are, because again, as we, we were talking about before I started, uh, I didn't get into wrestling until 95, 96, so it was the end of your international career was really when I, so I had to do some backtracking uh, right, as I was covering right. the sport, and what's yeah. impressive is the number of teams, but the the era you were in, I mean, there's, mm-hmm. it's one thing to be to be great in wrestling, but to, to do it and get through just to make those teams in American wrestling yeah. in that era, that must have been something else. Yeah, it really was. I mean, it was, um, yeah, it was just a great, it was a great era, just um, legends of the sport. You know, I had an opportunity to to be coached by some of the legends, you know, with uh, Bobby Douglas and Gable and Wayne, and not Wayne, but um, um, Bill Farrell was around a little bit. You know, he was kind of, he was doing the ASICs thing, but he was around. He was one of the old coaches. He coached those guys. Uh, Bill Wick was a, was a fascinating coach. And so we had some some really good guys. Uh, I think Gene Davis kind of helped out a little bit too. And so those were the guys that, you know, I looked up to that 72 team was the team that really sparked my interest when it came to the Olympic games. Um, I was 10 years old in 1972 and I'd been wrestling for four years and was starting to kind of, you know, make it my own and, and really kind of get a name for myself in, in Oklahoma. Uh, but then that 72 team came through, man. And I was, you know, I'm in Tulsa. I grew up in Tulsa, so I'm a, I'm an hour away from Stillwater, and that's where they were doing the the U.S. Open at the time. And so the U.S. Open, which was the Federation or whatever, but that's where the, those those Olympians came through there. So I got to watch Jimmy Carr, McTeam, uh, Rick Sanders, uh, Gene Davis, uh, Gable, Wayne Wells, which is you know from Oklahoma. And I've been fi- kind of following his career at OU. Uh, the Peterson brothers, Chris Taylor. So I got to I got to see these guys compete and, and get their autographs and get up close uh, and personal with them and then, so then when they you know went to the Olympic Games I was I was all eyes I was tuned in uh, and, and to watch that uh, that team have the success they had man I was that's what I, I wanted to be I wanted to when I saw that I was it was a wide world of sports and I was I was fascinated by Gable's story of course and uh, but then that was that was the moment that I I was like okay. This is this is what I want to do. This is what, who I want to be. I want to be the best in the world. Because I didn't even know that there was a possibility of being the best in the world. I was so focused <laughs> on being the best in the city of Tulsa. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was just trying to be the city champ. But when I saw that, I'm like, man, I could be the best in the world at this at this sport. And so then that was that was that's when I, really my journey started. Really. Well, you you kind of talk about it a little bit. There's there's levels to this. You know, saying what's it yeah. like to be. Just, just to make the U.S. team, it was a struggle into it itself. Just to, to have the chance to be the best in the world, you have to be the best in your country. But going right. back to to be the best in Tulsa was a thing back then. I mean, <laughs> right. what's it like wrestling in, in, in a place like Oklahoma? I mean, I didn't discover wrestling until late, so yeah. I didn't have that experience and what it was like to win, you know, battle for the city youth titles and things like that mm-hmm. in, in in a place as wrestling crazy as Oklahoma. So, um, you know, that upbringing, obviously, that's got to guide you in, 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 you know, iron sharpens iron, so to speak, such at an early age. But yeah, you know, absolutely. how does that, how does that, how did that shape your entire career? I mean, it really did. Like I said, it, it really, I was exposed to greatness early. I was exposed to greatness as a kid. And then, um, you know, I just saw, you know, I saw the level of competition at that, I mean, at that age. And so that really, what really kind of made me fall in love with the sport. And then freestyle too. I mean, freestyle 
you know, because when you grow up, I didn't rap so much freestyle as a kid. I don't think I started wrestling freestyle until I was in maybe in the fifth grade or so. Uh, but I was watching freestyle, and that, that was, I was blown away, just the moves that they were doing and how physical it was. And it was like a totally different, almost was almost a different sport. But um, that really kind of just saved me. And then I, at that point, you know, Oklahoma was a hotbed. It was just really a hotbed of wrestling. Myron Roderick was, you know, I came through when Myron was a coach at Oklahoma State. And so I would go down and see the teams and, you know, I, I was fascinated by, you know, some of the Japanese wrestlers that he had on those early, uh, those 60, 60, late 60s and early 70s. Well, I think he read, he, I think he retired in 70, I think 69 or 70. But I, I got to go and watch some of those teams, the Myron Rogers team. And then, of course, I had to meet Myron. But I was fascinated with, with Vegeta and, and that Japanese guy was amazing. Yutaki was amazing. And so I got to kind of see some of those guys as a kid. So just growing up in Oklahoma just really was, I mean, it just, it was, I didn't have to leave the sport. I mean, I'm not the sport. I didn't have to leave the the, uh, the state to get competition. And so it was really, um, I mean, it was just, I mean, 70, 75 clubs to wrestle against. So it was really, it was really cool, man, really good to, to grow up in, in Tulsa. And then, like you said, just to kind of go up through and then to have to, to wrestle against, you know, I just was talking to Lee Kemp the other day, but have those guys that I looked up to and then Dave Schultz and kind of looked up to two, I mean, he was, I was a fan before he was my, my rival. <laughs> so you know, I was watching Dave Russell, you know, before he became my rival. And, um, but those kind of guys, I was, I'm on the, I'm, a, I'm on the shoulder of those guys. You know, when I watched 72, they came, then the next guys came through was, uh, Lee Kemp and uh, Chris Taylor and, uh, man, Chris Campbell, um, you know, and those guys and Schultz came through. And so it was really those guys that kind of elevated my, uh, my mindset and elevated my, my thought process as far as trying to be the best in the world. You, know, you, you mentioned Chris Campbell and a lot of people, you know, yeah. know him more, more from his comeback than, yeah, uh, and, right. you know, know right? than in my era, than, 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 you know, what he was in his heyday. Uh, right, right. What, what was it like to witness his comeback and, and be there with him as, as he was sitting there making another run at, at, uh, in wrestling terms, a, a seasoned age. Yeah. Funny story, man. Cause I, cause I watched, I watched Chris when he wrestled at, at university of bio, of course. And, you know, I definitely was a fan and, and watched him win win national title. But then it was so funny. It was after um, after eighty nine when I beat Josiah in the finals. I think a couple of weeks later I get a call from Chris Campbell and <laughs> he was so fired up. He was so fired up. He goes, Man, dude, I'm 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 thinking about coming back to Russell. You you, know, you gotta be fired up too. <laughs> you know, and so he, he said, I said, What really? Yeah, and he just out of the blue, Chris, you know, called me and so um yeah, and then so he, he, he said, yeah, I'm, I'm going to come train. I'm going to come train. Where are you? Now? I'm in Stillwater. And, uh, yeah, so he came to Stillwater to train. And so I got to really actually work out with Chris a lot uh, from, you know, like 90 and, and then 90 through 92. You know, we worked out a lot. And I'd go out to New York and work with him. And he'd come to Stillwater. And uh, so, yeah, we kind of we kind of collaborated on that whole comeback that we had. But it was, it was really, for me, of course, it was, it was fascinating to, to even work with him. And uh, he was a big guy. He was a 98 pounder, but I could still roll with him, right? And so <laughs> that was really cool, man, to, to have him come back and and, uh, and train with us. When we look at your career, I mean, you 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 spanned some some generational teams there. You know, uh, you talked about having watched the 72 team, and now mm-hmm. we get to your current coaching level. The kids that you're you're getting through, yeah, they they know your name, but they didn't have the opportunity to watch you compete because they weren't born yet. <laughs> so you've got to kind of, you know, inter- I mean, how, well, is that, is that something you have to do? Introduce yourself in terms of uh, the, the internet. I don't mean it like that, but it's like, Hey, no, no, I did yeah. this. And then right, they have to, sure. they have to YouTube you or something, but like, right. cause you had a chance to see him and then you watch him on TV. That generation that would have seen you on TV is my age now. And right. we're long since competing. So I'm in, I'm in my right. early forties. So you've got to teach a generation of kids here that are, you know, Kale Sanderson was, was winning a fourth title as they were being born in this era. So, right, uh, right. you know, you've got to inter- introduce yourself and in, in your, uh, I don't want to say your abilities because that's pretty easy. Yeah. But what yeah. Do you, how do you do that to this generation well, of kids? Yeah. So it's so funny because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a humble guy, right? So I'm not, I'm not the guy that's going to like be to my own horn a whole lot, but I had to introduce myself to my own kids. <laughs> well, that was going to be my next question, but right, go ahead. They didn't, they, didn't, they didn't know who I was growing up. I remember so one one time we were somewhere in the tournament. The kids were they were really young and they were wrestling. They just started to wrestle, and 
And so these people kept coming up to me, like, you know, getting my autographs, and they're looking at me like, who are you? <laughs> who are you? <laughs> so they were, they were really kind of blown away that, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the people that were coming up to me, like, and, and you know, celebrating my career. Of course, I didn't explain it to them a whole lot when they were in early five and six years old, right? But it was so funny to watch their faces when other people reacted to me, and I'm just like their dad, you know? But, um, but yeah, it's just, you know, it's just different. Like, we, we, we grew up, of course, we didn't have YouTube, we didn't have Flow Rest, and we didn't have these, these uh, media outlets that these kids have today. And so, I mean, they can just pick up and, you know, and see any match pretty much uh, from back in the day. Uh, so yeah, I think some of it is just kind of a kind of show them some videotapes and thinking, well, yeah, well, you know, here's here's what's here's a videotape, coach? <laughs> I know, right? I know. It's yeah, it's non-existent, right? But um, but yeah, so I'd go back and show them, you know, this film of the, of the matches and kind of when I'm showing them technique, I'm like, oh, here, here's soldier. I'm showing you how how I do it. Let me show you what I did in my matches. And so yeah, it's just um, you kind of have to protect the kids back through the. You know the old days, but uh, it's so funny. I was had I was having a camp this last weekend, and so we're talking, and the kids are asking questions. They're like, "Well, you know, who's who? Who you think the best wrestler is now? And who do you, you know? Who, who's your favorite?" And they're like, you know, so of course, I'm talking. To, I said, you know, Bob George Burroughs name. And, you know, George Burroughs one of my favorite wrestlers. And he's he's one of the guys. You know, and they go, "Yeah, really." So they're talking. You think you'll beat him? You think you'll beat him in your prime? And of course, that that question always comes out. I said, well, let me just call him. Let me just let me just call him and see what he thinks. So, <laughs> so, I, so I FaceTime Jordan, right? And he picked up, right? He picked up right away. <laughs> well, when when, an, when when Kenny Monday calls, you answer. <laughs> I don't care how old you are or how great yeah, you Jordan, are. <laughs> yeah, well, Jordan's got a big deal. Yeah, he's got a big deal. But, he's KOBD, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he did. He picked up, and so it was so funny. He had his kids there, and so he got he talked to the kids and the whole thing. So it was a pretty cool moment. Yeah, and, and it's funny. I just remember a story Reese Humphrey was telling me one time about you know when he started wrestling, and his dad Jim never had anything really wrestling stuff around the house. He goes, "Yeah, I'm start wrestling." He goes, "Yeah, that's that's great, Dad. You're great at pull ups, but what do you know about wrestling?" And then all of a sudden, <laughs> oh wait, Dad was pretty good. Yeah. So uh, you know, oh, yeah. introducing the kids to wrestling was probably something that was going to happen uh, oh, yeah. with, with with Quincy and Kennedy. But uh, when did they really kind of realize that, you know, okay, the autographs, but wait, 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 wait. We might want to listen to what dad's talking about here. <laughs> yeah, I just think with the older they got, the more they kind of sunk in, you know, a little bit. And they would come back and we talk about, you know, like with dad, you know. But they asked me about, about you know, my matches and some of my career, some of the things that I did. And so I just kind of, every year, just kind of, as they got older, it kind of sunk in a little bit better, you know. You know, and then kind of just, of course, you now I'm coaching them and, you know, I, I pretty much, you know, guided the careers going early. So I think it's just as time went on, you know, it just kind of they they found out more about it and then get to watch some of my tapes. I mean, not tapes, but uh, some of my matches and that kind of thing. And so it just kind of kind of just kind of built as we went, right? And they're still kind of you know listening halfway, right? So they listen about eighty <laughs> percent. Yeah, the other part is that, right? Well, if I can get my kids to listen about eighty percent, I'd consider that a success. Well, mm-hmm. one thing that's also unique is I, I you know unique and talking about you know reese and jim and then you know obviously john and and you know the smith kids and you know growing up in stillwater where you where you raised your kids and wrestled you know texas non-traditional wrestling state a lot of a yeah. lot of untapped talent down there then right, you know right. north carolina a lot of college wrestling teams in north carolina a lot of wrestling in north carolina but they're not like Oklahoma. So, you know, I'd heard stories about when, when Joseph would be wrestling and that they'd say, John Smith's son's wrestling. So mm-hmm. how did you deal with maybe that pressure of being, you know, one of the goats uh, as, as, a, as a wrestler and then having your kids out there knowing that just the presence of your name is going to bring a little bit of added pressure to them? How did, how did you yeah. work that with them? Yeah, I, mean, I think it's just uh, you, you just kind of you, you go, you just take it for what it is. You know, just don't put too much pressure on them. Let them know that, you know, just your own journey. It's so funny. I think it was Kennedy's first first tournament. I think he was like six years old, whatever. I got him to this tournament. He was kind of, you know, having having a good tournament, going through through kids. He was winning his matches, and then he made it to the finals, right? But I, I had noticed a kid that was in his weight class that was coming through, right? And so I, I knew who he had in the finals. I watched the kid. And the kid was pretty salty. You know, he was he had been wrestling probably three years. Right? He had some experience, strong kid. So I knew Kennedy wasn't gonna get past this kid, right? I really, you know, kids is, is, is more experienced, right? And so, 
So Kenny gets to the finals, wrestle the kid, and, and the kid pins Kennedy, and right. So Kenny comes out, he's upset, he's kind of disappointed about the match. And then, but the dad on the other side was like lifting the kid up over his shoulders, and he's like celebrating. They really, I mean, he was just pumped up, right? He goes, "Do you know you just beat? Do you know who you just tell his kid? Like, Do you know who you just beat? You just beat Olympic champion, son." <laughs> I'm like, "Oh crap, here we go." <laughs> Here Sir, that doesn't go. mean you get the medal. <laughs> right. That doesn't work like that. <laughs> right, right, right. And so that was kind of the beginning of that whole deal. But, you know, I think it's just, you know, as we went along, you know, the kids would kind of feel it a little bit. I'm like, look, guys, you know, I mean, it is what it is, right? I, I'm, I am who I am. And would you want it the other, any other way? Like, no, no, no. We, 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 we appreciate, appreciate you being an Olympic champ and that whole thing. And so, yeah, so that's just kind of the territory, just kind of, you know, the life we live. That's just kind of where we are. And, and we just kind of learned to live with it. But then I think as we went on, you know, again, I, I just kind of explained to him, man, the pressure comes from, from other people, right? I mean, it doesn't really come. It's not coming from me. We got a standard. There's a standard that, that, that you know, I want you guys to compete at and, and train at. There's a standard because only, I only really know one way to train, and um, and that's to, to be at your best. And so that's the way my expectation is that. But still, it's your, it's your own career. It's your own. I don't expect you to be Olympic champ. Right. I just expect you to do the best you can and, and work hard. But I can show you all the technique in the world. And um, but you, I can't I can't uh, I can't wrestle for you. Right. And, and I just can't do the work. Like you, you've got to do the work. And so I just explain that to a man and, and let him know that, you know, end of the day, as long as you're doing your best, as long as you're preparing, you know, then uh, I'll, I'll be I'll be happy. Really, It's just about it's about your career. You know, another thing about wrestlers is when, you know, there's an older brother that's established and when the younger yeah. brother comes through, it's all of a right. sudden there's 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 the added added pressure here. Now, yeah. factor that with a move to a different state. I've got to be I got to wonder this this high school wrestling coach in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, has got to be like, yeah. oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Explain how, uh, you know, how you got Quincy to adapt to, to wrestling, how you end up choosing a high school where you guys were going to live and be like, all right, you're we're, we're not in Texas anymore. We're in yeah. we're in North Carolina. Right. Well, it actually happened a couple of times. Like when I, when Kennedy was a freshman, I, we moved to Florida and I took a job after, after uh, the, the Olympic games in 2012, and I coached Coleman. Um, I got a really, really nice offer to go coach the black zillions in, in Florida. And they came out to me and, you know, they offered a lot of money, kind of made me an offer. I couldn't refuse. And so we moved to Florida. And for, for those unfamiliar, that was a, you know, MMA group. Uh, MMA group. Fought, yep. fought out of there, yep, yeah. Guys, yep. MMA group. Uh, yeah, you know, Uzman was on the team, you know, the champ now. He was on the team. Uh, yeah, who else was on it? Uh, Vitor Belfort, Anthony Johnson, um, Gilbert, Gilbert uh, Burns was on the team. He just fought the other night. So it was a great team. But we went to uh, Florida, and Kennedy was a freshman. No, he was a, he was a sophomore. And we went to Cardinal Gibbons. And, um, and then so we ended up beating Lake Highland Prep, which I mean, they're a really nice school in, in yeah. Florida. I mean, they – I mean, they won probably five or six in a row. We beat them that year uh, at one state in Carmel Gibbons, right? And um, and so that was really, um, you know, just and, they, and it was kind of out of the blue. I just showed up and was looking for a school to put Kennedy in high school. Quincy was still young, middle school, and we called called the coach up. Hey, um, we're moving to we're moving to Florida. I think we're coming to your school. <laughs> and so he was really excited about us coming to Florida. And so. We beat Lake Island Prep, and then yep, and then so we went when we moved to North Carolina. Um, I took the job at uh, RTC coaching from Coleman in North Carolina UNC. It was the same thing. We were looking for actually we, we were looking for a house, and so I didn't really know what school they were going to. Um, and, it was, and so we found the house, and then we just happened to be in the school district. So I called the coach and said, "Hey, hey, we just got this house, and we're in your district, and so we're coming to your school." He was pretty excited. He was pretty excited. <laughs> and we went state. We won state for the first time ever. Um, that high school won state uh, in North Carolina with Quincy. That was, that was the first time that they had ever won. And so, yes, yeah, so Quincy was he was a state champion. He was two time state champ in Texas and two time state champ in North Carolina. That's that's just I I just you know I'm I'm just you you cover wrestling so much and you see people that move around and right. I mean the odds of just the name it's I mean your kids could have been you know third or fourth in state, never, never gone to the NCAA tournament. And that would still been a, yeah. a boon for me. Kenny Monday's here. You still, <laughs> you still carrying that reputation around now um, yeah. with the coaching aspect of it. Um, what you're doing now at Spire, explain what that is and, and how that's different from 
uh, what you've done at the college level and the RTC level. Wow. You know, well, it's, just, it's uh, you know, it's a prep school. It's a boarding school uh, in Geneva, Ohio, and um, brand new program. They just decided to, to start a wrestling program. And I, um, I came in contact, uh, you know, Ray Lewis was the one that kind of brought it to my attention. And Ray Lewis said, um, he name drop, just, just, just yeah, yeah. name drop Ray Lewis right there. Go yeah. for it. Well, that's, that's the truth. That's the truth. So Ray Lewis, you know, he was a, he's a two time state champion in, in wrestling in Florida. But so he, he met the owner and, uh, they both lived in Baltimore and Ray called me up and said, Kenny, I got, I got an opportunity for you. I think you want to look, you, know, you should take a look at it. And, uh, so I took a look at it, man, and, and came out and, and, and saw what the vision was for the prep school. And, and it's really, a it's really a fascinating uh, concept that they have, and it's a it's a boarding school, but it's um, ninth through twelfth grade. Uh, we got basketball. I mean, Lamella Ball came here his senior year to play. Uh, you know, the guy he's in the, he plays for the Charlotte Hornets now. Uh, I, I think I think everybody in the world of sports yeah. knows the last name Ball. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he came he came here to play his senior year in high school, or it might have been his post grad year. Pretty sure the conversation with 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 his dad and you were a lot were a lot different when you called that respective <laughs> coach. Right, right. <laughs> yep. And so we got basketball, we've got uh, track and field, we got swimming, we've got um, just just hired a women's basketball girls basketball coach, um, Candace Wiggins, and she played in the WNBA. Yeah, that name um, sounds familiar. Then, yep, Candace Wiggins, and then so we got then we started a lacrosse program. And so, yeah, so I'm just a head coach, man, starting a new brand new program. And it's different just because it's a different level. It's high school. I haven't called and coached high school since the Bishop days back in uh, in the 2000s. You know? So it's been a while you know, being on this level. I've been coaching, you know, senior level athletes uh, for the last uh, 10 years. And so it's different. Uh, but, again, it's still wrestling, right? It's still wrestling. And I think what kind of really piqued my interest is, you know, the boys are pretty much on their way. Um you know, Quincy's got one more year left in uh, Princeton, and so they're 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 grown men, man. They're 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 young men on their way, and so I just feel like it's an opportunity for me to to get back and give back to the sport, and really start working with younger kids on this level, and try to get those kids ready for for college. Because there's there's a gap, there's some there's some work to do that we have uh, as a country and on this level. So I just thought, you know, just an opportunity for me to go back and uh, kind of reinvest in these kids and really try to try to build a program. That was a challenge really to, to build a brand new program from, from scratch and just build it, build it, you know, just kind of see, see what I can do with it. It's a huge challenge, you know, a huge challenge. And so I'm, I love a challenge. I'm never, I'm never afraid of a challenge. I'm never afraid for something new. Um, and so I'm really excited about the opportunity to, to do this. Yeah. And geographically Geneva's basically, if you look at the map, it's between Cleveland, Ohio and Erie, Pennsylvania. So it's in that right. Northeast exactly. Ohio corridor. It's not exactly, exactly uh, in Cleveland proper. So it's not like you're going to yeah. get the neighborhood kids that are, that are pretty no, good no, that, no. that are scrapping, yep. you know, with, with St. Yep. Ed's, yep. but yep. this is, we're about 50 minutes from Cleveland and uh, we're right off the lake, right off the Lake Erie. And I got some kids from the Erie PA coming down to, to get some work in too. So, but yeah, it's a hotbed. I mean, Ohio is a hotbed of wrestling. It really is. You know, it's Pennsylvania, Ohio. I think you know, now they're probably, probably the, the hottest States in, in the, in wrestling right now. When you look at the the type of competition now, you know how do you how do you build a program at a school like this? First of all, the, the obvious questions: who are you competing against? Where are the postseasons? Those type of things pop up, and then there's the uh, you know people like to look at the private schools and they'd be like, hey, right. uh, well they have an unfair advantage, blah blah blah, non boundary schools. So, uh, what are some of those things that you that you have to navigate and, and explain to potential parents that are saying, hey, um, my kid, I think if once next level we're in, you know, right. we're we're interested in this type of education. Uh, you know, what type of question, you know, when it comes to answering those questions, what do you say? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's just uh, it's just another option to, to give to your kids. I mean, these kids these days are coming up with with, um, with just, I mean, a lot of them are really specific about their sport, right? And they're, they're kind of isolating one sport. And they're really serious about it. There's a lot of kids that are just serious about being good in the sport and they're dedicated. Um, and so it's just another another way to, um, you know, to, to navigate your kids' career. Uh, again, we're we're building a, a program that that uh, we're gonna we're gonna keep. We're, we'll compete at prep nationals, um, and so we'll kind of we're, we're compete with some of those prep schools uh, along the way. And just trying to really, man, I'm just I'm I'm selling the dream, man. The kids mm-hmm. that, that really want to to be great. I'm living the dream as an Olympic champ, and the platform has given me has just been amazing. 
And so I'm just selling the dream. I think this, it, it kind of reminds me of what I think the vision is to kind of make it like a, almost like an Olympic training center. And I would just remember my first time going to the Olympic training, training center in Colorado Springs. I just made the Olympic team. And so when I got there, I was, I was really, I was fascinated just because all the other sports were there. I mean, Roy Jones there, the boxing team was there. We had swimmers, we had um, basketball players, we had cyclists, we had rowers. And so all the other sports were there training and it was just athletes. And so I would see some of these athletes in the, in the cafeteria, get to talk to them, got to meet them, got to hang out with them and kind of hear their stories and, and their vision and what they did, their training methods. And so it was really, I was really fascinated. It was kind of, to me, it was like a sacred ground of just athletes just really trying to, and everybody had the same goal. You know, everybody, everybody there, their goal was to be the Olympic champion. And so that was like, that was, that was just fascinating to me. I'd never been in that type of environment. And so my, my vision had always been, even coming out of college, is to, to be able to work in an environment where I could build a, an athlete and just kind of take him through the stages, take him through the levels of the sport, you know, from high school to college to international wrestling and I always have a, a home for them to come and train. And so when I grew up, there was like, um, and I was always curious about how karate schools work. You know, these karate schools, they were on every corner and they were very, these guys ran businesses for, for years, they were very successful businesses. You know, but I knew wrestling was a martial art. And so I was always curious why, why come wrestling couldn't, you know, du duplicate that, that, that model as, as uh, you know, the Taekwondo schools. I knew, it was, I knew wrestling was, was very effective martial art. And so that was kind of my vision coming out of college. I mean, I, I, I want to start a, a, a academy of wrestling and just teach kids how to wrestle, you know, educate them, you know, get them to the next level and, um, you know, send them out in the world. And so this is kind of, kind of along those lines. So, so even back then, I kind of had a vision of, of what we're doing now, just building an environment where, you know, where, where kids can come here and they get serious about their, about their sport. And I can just teach them how to be champions, man. Just give them that opportunity to, to go and train and get specific training, um, be in that, this type of environment, and then just um, and just get to that next level. And then even even after college, you know, eventually what what we have we have a ninth through twelfth high school program, right? Then we have also have a post grad program. So it's kind of like that gap year. So the kids aren't quite ready to go to college, and they need that other another year of maturity, another year of training. We've got a program for them here at Spire, so that so the post grad program is available. Then, then also I want to add um, an RTC program uh, later, you know, down down the line. So you know, guys that are training or guys and girls that are training to make the Olympic team, uh, they can come here to train. So that's kind of the vision. Then we also you know, we got U twenty threes, the World Team Trials coming in June, that we're hosting. And this our facility, I mean, it's an amazing facility. It really is. It's really I've been all over the world um, and saw different training training facilities and different um, sport training facilities, but I never, never have I ever seen a, a training facility like we have here at Spire. And so, I mean, sky's the limit of what you can achieve here. Yeah, I first I first heard about it a couple of years ago when uh, I, I think it was Kent State, Cleveland State, and some other yeah. some of the schools. They had it was like a, a small college tournament, or if it was a dual thing. I just remember it was like at Spire, like what the heck is Spire? I just <laughs> right. I, I had no idea, and then all of a sudden, boom, Kenny Monday. I was like, okay, people are gonna know what Spire is from here yeah. on out. That's for exactly. that's for sure. But it seems like they they get they dip their their toe in the wrestling waters before they actually. <laughs> dove all in so uh right, you know right, explain right. what what the leadership's like and um the type of education that that's offered there that that makes this attractive beyond yeah. the wrestling side of things well yeah i mean the, the the and i'm that's probably the reason i'm here i mean of course ray lewis you know i met ray lewis back in 2013 while i was in florida uh, that's a funny story i don't know if you ever heard that story but i got time go for it yeah, yeah <laughs> i'm man, not a ravens so, fan but he so doesn't check know this that. out so check this out so i'm i'm after practice, MMA practice, I go to wash my car. Uh, I had the next day off, so I had a little time off. It was a beautiful day. I took my car down to the car wash, which is only like two blocks down from, from the gym in Boca Raton. And then so I go to the car wash, turn my car in, so I'm coming out. And I see this white, beautiful white Rolls Royce. Oh, man, that's a beautiful car. I wonder who that is, right? So I turn around, and then, you know, they have the benches over there where you can wait on your car uh, to come through. 
And I look over there and I'm by myself. I look over there and he goes, man, that was Ray Lewis. And so Ray was sitting over at the bench, right? And I had never met him before. He had just retired. This is 2013. He had just retired. And uh, I was like, man, I'm, I'm trying to talk myself into going over. Because I didn't really want to bother him. But then you're an like, Olympic no, champ over. and you're, and you're, right. you're sitting exactly. there trying, trying right. not to make right. it weird. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. But you know, I didn't want to act like I was a fan boy, you know, so I was like trying to be cool. But then I was like, nah, I'm going to go over here and introduce myself. So I go over there and say, hey, Ray, how you doing, man? I'm Kenny Monday. Uh, big fan, man. I've been watching your career. You know, big fan, man. I love you. I love the way you play the game. And he goes, Kenny Monday? I go, yeah, Kenny Monday. He said, the, the wrestler Kenny Monday? I go, yeah. He jumps up, man. He gives me a hug. He goes, man, you my, you my boy. You my hero. I'm like, well, yeah, what are you talking about, man? He goes, man, when I was in high school, my coach was he was showing me your videotapes and and uh talking about you and saying how bad you was and you need to wrestle like game monday and da, 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 da. i'm like really and so i remember i was getting ready for the 92 olympic games right this is back i was training serious training and i was getting ready for the trials and so he i remember a, a coach from florida calls me up and he goes yeah my name is i forget the guy's name i'm from florida and high school coach and Man, I got this really, really good, good football player, but he's wrestling for me, and I think he can win state. I've been showing him your tapes. And he goes, you know, think you can come out and, and work with him and you know, do a clinic here and work, work with him a little bit. And I go, man, I'm so busy. I'm getting ready for the trials. I, I really well, would, you know, but maybe after after the, the, the Olympic games are over, I, I'll, I'll come back or whatever. And he goes, okay, man. He said, well, I'm, I'm gonna keep showing him your tapes and good luck in the trials. Da, da, da. And that kid he was talking about was Ray Lewis. And right, and so and so I never. So I, so of course, I, of course, he was with Ray Lewis then, and so I'm like, but he just that's who it was, and uh, so all those years went by, all those years went by, and then that's when I met him, right? So that was Ray Lewis that he was talking about, and he was a two-time state champ in Florida, right? So that's where that came from. Where he's like, "You're my hero," right? That whole thing, and so that was so cool that uh, that's how it happened. That's that's so, just that is great. You have one, the fact that <laughs> you just see Ray Lewis sitting there getting his right. car washed. I mean, yep. I mean, the I, only thing I can think of is there's there's a haircut place right, like literally <laughs> right, like two right. two minutes, three minutes from my house right. that a right. lot of the Timberwolves hit up. Right. So on the right day, if I'm like, um, well, yeah, I'm losing my hair, so I don't really need to haircut. Yeah. Yeah. But if if I go on the right day, I could probably see Carl Anthony Towns in there or something. Yep. So yep. yeah, yep. so it's check not, this out though. So even so, after we met, right? So he, so we exchanged numbers. I said, man, my gym is right down the street. He goes, man, I miss wrestling. I kind of want to get back into it. I'm like, well, come on down to the gym. We can roll around a little bit. And so I didn't think he was coming, right? I didn't think he was going to So we say, I didn't, I didn't think he was going to come. That next week, he showed up. Because we had wrestling on Tuesdays and Thursdays. That next Tuesday, he showed up at practice, right? Brought his wrestling shoes. How old were those things? No, he had, they, they, were, they weren't old. He had, okay. he had some he, shoes. He, he had some shoes, some, okay. Yeah, he must have <laughs> bought some shoes or whatever. You know, they weren't old, but so... But but do want to roll. He wanted to wrestle. He's like, all right, man, come on, let's, let's let's get on the mat a little bit. Yeah, so we wrestled for about about 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> so how big how big is Ray right now? How how big is Ray post retirement? Ray is he's you know, Ray's probably about two thirty, probably two thirty five, two forty probably. And he's he's good size, he's good size. And new to strong, man. So we rolled for about fifteen minutes. And um yeah, he's got he had some skills. He had some skills. And he was trying to get me to <laughs> Ray was trying to take me down. We was like going live, and uh, he ain't gonna take down me. I mean, he went for about fifteen minutes. You get a chance. To, <laughs> you get one shot in Olympic champ. I mean, right, I think Novogratz right, right. is still talking about foot sweep <laughs> right, and Kendall at the Olympics that right, one year right, in ninety right. in in in, in twenty twelve. But now, and, I wasn't and, about to give him a takedown. He went for about fifteen seconds. Fifteen like, minutes. Nah, nah, it was man. cool, man. It was, but he, but I could tell he had some. He had some wrestling. He had some wrestling skills for sure. Yeah, because there's also that video that that circulated in the from the Ravens locker room where he was refing. I think it was uh, uh, yeah. Kelly Gregg and um and Art Jones, who's yeah, John yeah, Jones's yeah. brother, yep. and yep. he's calling yep. out moves like, "No, he's I mean, he's calling." It's right. clearly now, he, he wrestled. Here. A lot of people are like this guy yeah, knows he, wrestling. He's like, "Yeah, he Ray knows wrestled." What he's doing. He knows what he's doing for sure. Absolutely. So you yeah. told me that story to tell this story. <laughs> yeah, and the, and the story is yeah because he met the owner, and so the owner is just like. Um, you know, he's he's a developer. Yeah, he's, I mean, we're building a hotel on on property, building a Marriott, building a Marriott. Yep, right on property, right in right in the front of part of our uh, building uh, with a Starbucks. And he's just a really um, a fascinating guy. And you just got to look him up. His name is Jonathan Aaronfield, and uh, but just a smart guy and and, and um, got a huge vision for for 
wanted for this place. And he kind of just kind of fell upon it, right? It was previous owner had it and he kind of wanted to sell it. And, uh, and Jonathan, you know, found it and, and bought it. And, um, and so now he's got a whole different vision for, for, I mean, it's going to be like, it's really going to be like an Olympic training center. It really is. I mean, he's building a hotel. He's got two hells, two hotels he's building. He's building a, uh, maybe like maybe a little mini, mini little golf course, uh, and we're gonna build these um, these programs. You know, the basketball program is probably the you have the probably the most uh, kids in the in the basketball program right now. But swimming is on is on the rise. Uh, track and field is gonna be great. Got great coaches there, um, and then lacrosse starting a lacrosse program. And uh, and what I love is that everybody supporting one another. Everybody's uh, you know backing one another, and we had a and, and the guys like the. You know the guys that the, the administrators. A lot of those guys came from uh, the the, um, the IMG program. You know the IMG program. Yeah, yeah. Florida. I was actually going to bring that up. How similar is it yeah, to IMG yeah, Academy? Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of that's kind of the the model that these guys are, are working under. Um, and so they they are really serious about you know just you know building the business and and, and making sure that uh, we develop this academy. And uh, but you know the academics is really good. I mean I think it's really about the teachers here are really, really, um, and they're different it's just because they, they understand sports. They understand the, the rigors of sport. And so they're not, they're not working against the student athletes. I mean, they're actually working with them. They're not giving them anything, you know, like it's not easy, mm-hmm. but they are really preparing them. We have, we have, we have a performance coach. We have a um, strength and conditioning coach that's outstanding. He's really, really good. And we have a middle coach. And so we're trying to hit all angles. That, that really prepares these kids for the for the next time. We have a you know a great uh, social media guy that's really kind of showing and teaching kids how to do you know conduct interviews and and how to how to, to deal with the press and how to, how to you know do their social media. And of course, with this all this whole NIL deal, so they're really trying to hit those angles as well and try to build value for these kids. So my 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 objective, of course, is to is to send kids off to college prepared academically. So when they when they when it comes time for them to make a choice to go to college, whether they go into Ivy League school, whether they're going to Oklahoma State, I wherever they want to go, they've got a choice to to make that decision. And so it's not like, you know, I wanted to go to Harvard, but I couldn't get in, or I didn't have the grade. Uh, I wanted to go to Princeton, but I couldn't get in. You know, I wanted you to. I want them to be well prepared uh, when it comes time for them to make a choice going to college, you know, where they want to go. And so. Uh, that's my focus, you know. Of course, I've I've been in, been in the game for you know over fifty years, fifty you know almost sixty years, um, fifty years, fifty five, I would say. Uh, so I yeah, got don't the don't date yourself too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sixty, man. I'm sixty years old, and so and I'm proud of it. I, I still roll <laughs> around. I can still beat most of the kids in the room. <laughs> so, but uh, now I'm proud of that, man. And uh, but I but I I've got the blueprint. I've got the blueprint. I've had kids at Russell. You know, of course, of course, he's got one more year at Princeton and. I understand this game. I understand how to get better. I understand, you know, how to manage a kid's career. And, and so that's that's the, the education that I'm getting these kids and their parents with, um, just trying to educate them on, on the sport of wrestling and in sport and in, and getting ready to, to prepare these kids for, for college. Well, that's one thing I've seen, you know, even just from a distance, you're, you're walking the walk with that because you've yeah. got two kids that got into two very – academically right. challenging place. It, it is not easy to get into the University of North Carolina. It is yeah. definitely not easy to get into yeah, Princeton. And school. you've got two kids that have performed at the highest level at, right. you know, esteemed academic institutions. Right. Now, I, I'm curious, when when, did, when does Quincy, to, to get into your kids here, because this is also what yeah. intrigues me, is right. when when does he tell you, Dad, I'm, I'm thinking Ivy League? <laughs> You know, you know, Quincy's always been, he's always been, you know, a great student, you know, and uh, it kind of started by, I think, our, our daughter, Sydney, you know, Sydney's 27 years old, and she's a, she's a, a children's book editor with Penguin Random House, and so she's really the, <laughs> probably the smartest. I need to get her on the show, because that is <laughs> exactly. awesome, too. <laughs> yeah, now, Sydney is awesome. Sydney, Sydney graduated in three, three years from high school. She went to Italy for a uh, uh, culture exchange year, spent a year in Italy at 17, 16, 17 years old. Cause she had that gap year, you know, then she, she graduated from Howard university. And, um, and so she's really doing well in her career in New York. And um, so it kind of started with her and she kind of, and she was a great big sister kind of brought these kids up. And you know, Quincy was just a, a great reader coming up and you know, Kennedy was too. And so 
my my vision my my wife Sabrina and you know, and she you know she's a she's a Mary Kay director that she's really uh, successful in her own right and so we just we we kind of she drive the pink Cadillac she does she does and do you ever drive was, the pink Cadillac I do because Cody Bickley today. doesn't want to drive his pink Cadillac I drove it, I drove it today <laughs> I would drive it any day of the week it's an Escalade pink Escalade is yeah it's it's, it's a beautiful car no I don't have a problem driving pink. <laughs> anybody anybody that knows me will tell you. So my wife has been in, she's been in, in Mary Kay for for thirty years. She's a national a national sales director, kind of the highest she can go. She drives a, a pink Escalade, and I would drive it any day of the week. <laughs> anybody that knows me tell will tell you. But um, our whole vision for our kids was just to, especially the boys coming out for wrestling, was just to to make sure that they had a choice in where they wanted to go to school, right? Whether they wanted to go to Ivy League or I didn't want anything to be off the table. You know, and they could have went to Oklahoma State. They could have went to, you know, OU or or one of the big schools or where where I mean, wherever they wanted to go, they could have gone. Um, but when Quincy was coming through, you know, I knew he was, um, I knew he was he was very serious about his studies. And uh, when they started recruiting recruiting him, the one thing that that really kind of made me give my give my blessings for Princeton was that that. Uh, you know, the coaching staff. I mean, those guys are really good. And Ayers are really good. Joe Dubuque, uh, Nate Jackson, um, those guys are great. I mean, those guys are good coaches. But what, what I saw, I saw Kalazic, All-American, right? And, um, you know, Kalazic, right? So he, he All-American at Princeton. And so I was like, okay, if he can All-American, you can, you, can, you can go to Princeton and win, right? Because he didn't, he wanted to wrestle. He wanted to win. So he wanted to go somewhere we could win. And uh, that kind of showed me that, that those guys were serious. They didn't, it wasn't just about academics. I mean, they wanted to win. And so I said, when I saw you know, Kalazic was All-American, I'm like, well, listen, you, you, can, you can be a national champion and go to Princeton, right? These guys are doing the right thing. They want to win. It's not just about, you know, they're not making excuses because you're at Princeton and Ivy League. They still want to win, right? And they, they're going to prepare you to win. So when I saw that, I'm like, yeah, man, you, you can win there. You, you can go to Princeton and win. Right, because I knew that he he wanted he didn't want to turn down an opportunity to go to Princeton when they, when they recruited him, and then they knew he could get in. Uh, he really, when he came down, it came down between UNC and Princeton, and uh, as much as I wanted him at UNC because I was there, uh, when he got in, you know, when he got accepted, I'm like, man, you, he's a guy. I just don't want to. I don't want, I don't want to turn down an opportunity to go to Princeton. And I I agree. I mean, my wife and I we agree with it. And uh, but he he wouldn't he wouldn't have been happy just going to Princeton, right? He wanted to win, and so as long as they were doing the right things with you know, the coaching staff and in the practice room, I knew he could. I knew he could be successful. And, and looking at it in the finals, because uh, you wrestled in the finals on three occasions in college, yeah. and then yeah. two of those you came up short. So yeah. I, I'm yeah. curious on the dad mode, the coach mode, and the elite dad mode. There's three three different conversations, probably yeah. more. Yeah. You could have had. Yeah. What was the What was the conversation like when when, when Quincy finally? Uh, came back and you had a chance to kind of sit with him for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it never changed. You know what I mean? From the time we, we went to Tulsa Nationals, it never really changed as far as your preparation, you know, and, and knowing and believing in yourself and knowing that you're good enough to win. Um, but that moment, you know, I, I can remember back when they were even high school and I would, I would give them visuals, right? I, my, my thing was like, you gotta be, you gotta see it before you can be it. Right. It's always been one of my sayings. So I would send them, a picture when they got to college, a picture of that that finals match, right? You know, you can you know the the the, the mat where it has the NCAA mat, that beautiful mat, and it's like, you know, it's all lit up and and just a mat by itself. And so I would send them pictures of that, right? And that's that's the moment you want to be in. You want to be in that that final mat, that match, you know, and that's the finals. And so that's kind of the vision that that, that I always kind of put before them. And um, but yeah, I, mean, I think it was just. You know, of course, when he went through as a freshman, he uh, he was like he was sick the, the week before the tournament. He got sick. I mean, he got really sick. They really didn't have a good tournament. He, he showed up sick and never, never quite got got his legs under him. So then the next year, the sophomore year, was having a, had a great season. I think going into the the season or going to the NCAA tournament, he was ranked. Uh, I think he was fifth. Yeah, he's a five seed. Year. Yep, he was fifth seed, and then. You know, of course, you know, a week before COVID, they shut down. Uh, or a week before NCAA, they shut down. It was really heartbreaking for us because that was the first time that him and Kennedy would have been able to compete 
in the NCAA tournament together. Mm-hmm. And uh, Kennedy had, I think he had uh, Joseph uh, Kent State kid first match. And so we were excited about that. We had a great game plan for him, and we were really excited about that. And uh, But they shut him down. And so that was really heartbreaking. So, and then, of course, last year they didn't have a, didn't have a season. Uh, Ivy's didn't because, because of COVID. And, um, well, yeah, because they, they didn't have a season. So we pulled Quincy out of, out of school. Because we didn't want him to lose that year. Because in Princeton, they don't they don't redshirt. You know, it's got to go straight four years. And so if you're in school, and you you gotta you gotta finish straight four. So we pulled him out of school and just brought him home uh, to Chapel Hill. And so I trained him that whole year. Uh, I was training Jordan Burroughs for I mean not Jordan Burroughs Jordan Jordan Oliver for the Olympic trials. And so him and Jordan worked out. And so Jordan that was Jordan. Of course, he was Jordan's best workout partner. I mean, they probably his you know more consistent workout partner. And him and Jordan just worked all, all year. And so that really was a good year for me to to really spend some time with him and really train him. And uh, so this year, it was just about, man, you just, and, they, and there, was, there, there was kind of their motto, unfinished business. And I was like, man, you just don't want to take this for granted, right? Because we know what happened, you know, and um, you just got to got to live every day, you know, to the fullest and, and, and make sure that, you know, because you, you never know what could happen in the future. You may not have another opportunity to, to win a national title. So just take it one match at a time, and uh, and believe that you that you can win, and um, and that's kind of how he, he approached it. You know, but Quincy, Quincy's a different kind of kid. Man. He he doesn't ever get too high or too low. He kind of stays even, and uh, he just he just he doesn't get rattled. You, he's not gonna really beat himself. He's um you gotta beat him. You know, so it's uh I knew he was he was he was poised enough to to get it done and and um, and then give his give his give his best performance. But it's but it's still nerve wracking, of course. <laughs> watching kids wrestle, yeah, it's still it's still nerve wracking for sure. But it's it's more so than it is when I wrestle because I when I wrestle, you know, of course I I can control what I do out there. And for them, I can't I can't I can't wrestle for them. I can't control it. So it's kind of a little nerve wracking. One of the cool things the NCAA has done in recent years is they've they've given a spot four seats. For family to be right there, Matt side because right, gone right, are the days. Right. Uh, recent memory: Tony Ramos just trying to scale the scale the railing. Your inner Sandy <laughs> is yelling, "Don't climb over that railing!" Trying to get right. to his family wherever they're sitting. Now they bring you Matt side, and you got an opportunity to sit there and, and watch your son in the NCAA finals. Matt side, there's there's the opportunity to, to be that close, but uh, you know, is, is it kind of a double edged sword? You know, when when the uh, the unfortunate loss happens, you're like. Yeah. Okay. Right. We can't. We yeah. can't. We can't just cover our head can't here. Hide, we're we're can't in front of everybody. I mean, wh- first can't, of all, what's that experience like as a parent? Just just to witness that close, your kid in the NCAA finals. Yeah, well, it's it's beautiful because I you know I saw other other families doing that. Right? I knew that that was an opportunity. Once they made the finals, that they would invite the parents down, Matt's side, and so it was kind of a. It was a decision for sure, right? For one, you know, watching Quincy up in our seats, right? Mm-hmm. Watching him go through the tournament, match by match by match, and then making it. You kind of want to, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a guy where, you know, I, I kind of, if, if it's working, I kind of stay with it, right? And so I was like, part of me was like, I just want to kind of stay right here because he's been winning in these seats and we've been celebrating <laughs> right here in these seats. I don't want to, I don't know if I want to change. And so it's so funny because, you know, Pat Glory's parents was sitting right next to us. We're in the same row. And so we kind of had the discussion of, well, you going down? Well, you going down? What do you think? You going down? And so we're both was kind of like, I don't know if I want to go down. I don't know if I want to go down, right? And uh, But then, you know, of course, you know, you, you don't get that opportunity. You don't get that opportunity to go down and, and watch, be right there for your kid and, and watch him right there. I mean, that's, that's the best seat in the house anyway, right? It's a great seat. And uh, who wouldn't want that seat, right? But, yeah, it, it was a decision. We, we decided to go down and, and, and in support of it. And it really – you know, of course, he said uh, after the match, Chris said, "Man, I'm glad you guys came down to support me." Right, so it was really the best thing to do. Right, but then again, part of me is like, I don't want, I don't, I didn't want to be mad side where he can kind of see me and kind of have a you know a feeling about you know me being so close and or me screaming because I know I'm screaming, right? But I didn't want to, I didn't want to out scream his coaches because they're they're coaching them. They you know they got a whole thing they got the routine they have. And, so I didn't want to, I kind of had to bite my lip a little time, you know, a couple of times where, you know, especially when he got that last sequence that, that, that ended up losing for him. I'm screaming, it should have been stalemate, stalemate. Right? So, 
So that was kind of a tough deal, but I'm glad we got to do it. He was glad we got to do it, man. I mean, that's that's a moment in, in life and a moment in history that you just, you never know if you get it again. And um, and so we were actually glad to be there. Of course, the whole family was there. My daughter was there. Kenny was there. And, and so it was really, really fun to, to, to watch it, you know. Because, of course, me, you know, I'm thinking the opposite. I'm thinking we're going to celebrate right there after he wins, right? So I never thought he wasn't going to win. I never thought, I never thought he wasn't going to win. And I believe in him, right? I believe he can, he can get it done. Naturally. Now, a couple things. One, how many how many kids or how many of your teammates have have kids named Sydney from '96 <laughs> or have kids named Sydney from the Olympic years? That's one thing I'm wondering. Know. Brand's got a kid. Yeah, Brand's and and, Sydney, and Slay yeah. both have Sydney, so you yeah. got a Sydney, yep. and um, yeah, uh, they, you know, <laughs> after me, right? Hey, you're the trendsetter. Now, <laughs> right. you, you brought her up, and then you talked about going to Howard and uh, HBCU. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, great. Yeah. You know, that's when you talk about legendary and, and, you know, storied HBCUs. Howard is one of them. We actually have got a new HBCU wrestling program yeah. that's going to start up at Morgan State. Morgan State right. yep. The opportunity here, and this is something that, you know, you touch on about the, the, the minority athlete, the African American mm-hmm. wrestler, that right. the opportunities are gone. Right now, uh, granted, Morgan State's coming back. Bluefield State mm-hmm. is a Division II school in West Virginia, yet it's kind of an HBCU in name only right now. They're trying to yeah. bring sports back to the campus to bring it back to its former former stature. And then Allen right. University, a Division II school, uh, has it. Uh, Arkansas Baptist is transitioning from the junior college to the NAI. So the HBCU options for, for about, I guess, from 09 when Delaware State dropped uh, to now Morgan State the, will be Division One. There's going to be you know a 20-something year gap here, uh, or almost yeah. a 20-year gap. And uh, as a black wrestler, as somebody who – uh, came through an era where you had a few more options, but they weren't. Th- you weren't. You were not gonna go to an HBCU D1 program back. Just it, they weren't there at the level. Morgan State was probably the the star team back then as, as yeah, a Division II was. school. Yeah, yeah. The opportunity your daughter had to go to Howard. What does yeah. that mean for for you as a parent? And what was what will the Morgan State opportunity you think mean for for other parents like you that want to send their kids and have that HBCU experience? Mm, right. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think it was it was a great experience for her. Of course, my wife, uh, Sabrina, she graduated from from HBCU. She graduated from Tennessee State, mm-hmm. and so she had home of the Tiger Bells. Yep, yep. And so she graduated from there. And um, but I remember back, you know, watching wrestling when Morgan State had a program and Howard had a program, and the guys going to those programs. A couple of guys from my my uh, hometown went to went to Howard, and when they had a program, and a couple a couple of guys went to Morgan State. And I, I mean, I, I'll never forget the coach that was at Morgan State. That he always wore the little tiger. Uh, Jim vest. Phillips it was his name. Yeah, yeah. Phillips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was always fascinated by him. But um, no, it was it was just an incredible opportunity. I mean, Sydney, she had a full ride to, to Howard University, academic full ride. Uh, but she was she was accepted to NYU. So it really came down between NYU and and, and Howard. And I remember taking her on her, her campus visit to, New, to NYU. And, uh, and I really thought she was going to go to NYU for a while because he, because he was right there in the city and she loved New York. And, and so we thought about it, but then when it came down to it, you know, it was the HBC, HBCU experience that she was, uh, wanted to go through it. So she ended up going to, to Howard, um, to, to, for, for school. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great, great, um, experience great environment i would have loved to have done that i always like i always after after college i was like man I, w- I wish i could go back and then go 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 to an hbcu and experience that right it was so rich in culture it was so cool we were just in um you know they had the all-star game here in cleveland and so one of the nights they had a, a hbcu basketball game they had morgan state they had a howard playing at this at the basketball game down in cleveland so we, me and my wife went down there and, and watched the game. It was so much fun, man, and watching the band, you know, battle and that whole thing. And it was so cool. And uh, but just, I'm so happy that, that Morgan State, is, you know, was coming back and and uh, giving these guys an opportunity to wrestle. And of course, you know, growing up in Oklahoma, you know, we we really had, you know, probably two of the only black teams in the in the, in the state. And um, and it was we had we went through some trials and some tribulations as as, as black teams, you know, going to these ten tournaments and it was. Some some of the so the teams didn't want us there. Some of the parents didn't want us there, and some sometimes we'd show up to the tournament and our, our, we wouldn't be on the brackets, right? And <laughs> we'd enter the bracket and we'd get there, and it's like we're 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 not even in bracket. Like, well, you can't wrestle, you're not in the bracket. 
So we would go through those things. And um, I remember we had you know, referees would, would like take matches from us. And, and that's, it's only maybe a couple of times I even thought about quitting wrestling. And that was one of them. And I was a little kid and, and the referee was, you know, we were giving some bad calls, getting bad calls here and there. And uh, there's this one moment where I was really, uh, had this one kid that was a, he's kind of a nemesis, a nemesis of mine. He was, he was a pretty ch- child prodigy at the time. He was winning a lot of matches. So I had this one tournament I was really ready for. I was really prepared. And I beat this kid. I out wrestled. I know I out wrestled him. And I really should have won. And referees took took points here, points there, and ended up losing a match. I was so heartbroken. And I was ready to quit the sport. Because I'm like, man, this has happened three or four times before. And I'm like, man, this is ridiculous. I don't want to do this. Of course, all my friends were playing basketball. So I was getting, I was only like, you know, 10 years old. And um, but I was ready to quit. I was ready to quit. Because I was just like, man, they don't want us here, you know. I mean, Vote, you know, the referees are taking matches. And my dad said, look, man, I know you love the sport. That's not your fight. That's not your, that's not your fight. Let us handle the politics of this thing. And, and we, we'll we talk to the administrator. We'll talk to the terminal director. Talk to, so let us handle that. If you want to wrestle, here's the thing. It just can't be close. It just can't be close. Don't take the referees out of the deal. Take the referees out of the equation, and you won't have that problem. And so it just kind of really changed my life, right? So from that point on, I was afraid for the matches to be close. So it really, you know, it really jumped it jumped my whole mindset to a whole nother level because I was afraid for the matches to be close. And so I would just come out with, with a vid. I would come out with so much fire and determination. And it just really changed my life. And I'm sure all my competitors saw it because I was a different kid from that point on. I was a different kid from that point on and really – it just changed my whole, my whole approach to the sport. You know, it really did. Because I'm like, I, w- I refuse to let these guys run me out of the sport. I refuse to let these guys dictate, you know, how I, how I can be in the sport of wrestling. I know I'm, I know I'm good, and I'm destined to be great. And I saw it early. And um, so, yeah, that really kind of changed my, my whole mindset. And it, it carried me all the way through to, to the 88 Olympic trials, wrestling Dave Schultz, because you know, Dave was a, was a golden boy, you know, and, and uh, you know, the USA Wrestling, and they, they, they kind of were already promoting Dave and Mark. You know, they were defending champions, of course. They're going to promote these guys, right? I mean, they, they are our best guys. They're, they're proven. And so I was breaking through. And so, you know, a couple of matches before, I thought I had some, some close calls with some of the referees. And so I remember talking to Tucci before the match. He was like, Tucci, <laughs> Tucci. Just be fair, man. Just just call the match fair. Let let us win. Let us win or lose the matches, right? I know you're getting a lot of pressure, you know. They want these guys on the team, but just just be fair, man. And so, but again, wrestling Dave Schultz, I was like, man, it can't be close. These matches can't be close. You go back and watch the trials, and they weren't close. <laughs> I do want to circle back to the HBCU thing real quick because. Yep. One thing, you know, I think uh, the HBCU wrestling, you know, Nate Jackson has been been a big part of that uh, with yep. the Black Wrestling Association as well, yep. is the potential. I think they're talking five or six more schools. And, I, I, you know, I grew up in southeastern Virginia, so I, I grew up 10 minutes from Hampton University, right. 25 oh, minutes nice. from Norfolk State. I, yeah. you know, people don't know this about me. I watch HBCU football quite quite <laughs> frequently. I mean, right. the Bayou right. Classic was something I didn't miss for, for years. Classic. So yeah. think about this. We put wrestling at Grambling, and we put wrestling at Southern. Imagine, and they always play the Bayou Classic during wrestling season, late right. part of football season. Could you imagine a Bayou Classic wrestling match in the Superdome? Think about oh, yeah. that potential oh, yeah. right there. How quickly could that grow the sport? Yeah, Holy absolutely, crap. Absolutely, man. I think it's just another opportunity to give these kids an opportunity to, to go to college, man, and get an education. You know, And then wrestling is really, to me, this is the best time in my lifetime to be a wrestler. It really is. I think just because of um, the opportunities these young kids kids have, as far as like international wrestling, they have the Cadet Worlds, your Junior Worlds, all these things, and then of course the tournaments, and then the the um, I think the sport, the, the club program has really revolutionized re- revolutionized our sport because now you can run a you can run a you can run a business. You look at Perlers, you look at you know all these guys, um, David Taylor's, you know the you know, the edge back in the day. I mean, a, my club program that I used to have. But, I mean, now you could actually run a business, kind of like that model I was talking about, the karate school. So you could actually run a business now and and, and, and su- su- sustain yourself. 
So I think it's the best time to be a wrestler. So it's really, you know, having HBCUs, it just really kind of, you know, it really kind of gives us more opportunities, more, more um, options for these kids to go to college, you know, and then they have that experience at HBCU, which is, again, man, I, I was coming up, when I, I went through, um, through the time, and of course, Langston University was right, right, you know, probably 20 minutes, 25 minutes from Oklahoma State. And so I would always slip down to Langston University, which is HBCU. I would slip down there and, and hang out with the, some of the guys and some of the girls down there. It was really, really fun time. My aunt graduated. She was, she was a Langston University graduate. So, Yeah, if you fly into I, Oklahoma uh, City, if I'm not – it depends on which way you take into Stillwater. You'll right. pass right by it. You'll pass I remember right passing it and I go, why don't they have wrestling here? Yeah, right, right, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, you pass right up through Langston. Yeah, so no, I think it's a great thing. I think what what Nova Grads and those guys are doing, and Nate Jackson and uh, Nate Parker is a big part of that as well. And, um, no, I think it's going to be great, man. I think it's going to be great. It's going to be great, uh, and hopefully they get a, a great coach to to run that program. Lastly, before we circle back to Spire, Kennedy's been talking about coming back. He's yep. you know. Uh, you know how how soon do you, you know <laughs> we're recording this on Tuesday, April nineteenth? How soon do you think right, he's going to make a decision? Right. Well, you know, I think uh, for Kennedy, man, he's um, he took a little break, right? He took a little break, and so he's got to go back. He's got a, he's got ten hours to finish finish his degree at the UNC, so he's going to go back and, and finish his degree this summer, uh, and then once he does that, he's gonna he'll make a decision on on what he wants to do. He's got a year that he can get back because he missed a year one year because he had a head injury, right? And so he, he had to sit out a year. So he's got one more year possibly. Uh, he's got to get a medical waiver kind of thing. And so once he clears that waiver and then he'll, he'll be able to, um, to, uh, to pick, pick a school where he wants to go. But he's got to, he's going to go to grad school. Once he graduates and he'll go to grad school and then we'll see where he can, where he, where he wants to go. So I'm not for sure where he's going to go. I really don't. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's a, he's a social media guy, man. He'll be, he'll be out there and he'll, He'll say he'll put some stuff out there just. To he's gonna of, dangle everything. He's gonna have yeah, everybody. Exactly, right? <laughs> right. I mean, I'm I'm gonna have to. I'm just like you know, it's like, do I turn on note? I'm just because I'm curious where he's gonna go. I'm like, you know what? I, yeah. Man, he's gonna just be showing up on my timeline, showing up yeah. on the timeline yeah. with little yeah. emojis. Yeah. Like, loves, what what kind of cryptic to, stuff are you doing? Who who inspires teaching him this people. stuff, man? <laughs> he loves to tease people, man. So he really does. I had a, had a guy from Cleveland State call me. Hey, man, what about what about coming to Cleveland State? He be, he'd be close to you. <laughs> like, <laughs> It's probably just the opposite. You want to be a little further away from me, right? I mean, I'll be in this. I'll be in this here. Now you need to do a little bit more today, right? But quickly, and people so, in the West Coast are drawing maps, going, "We are this far away from your dad." Right. right. Exactly. You know, Zeke's probably exactly. already done the math on that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. He's got a call. He's got a call for sure. So we'll see, man. I, hopefully, he'll get it. And you know, I think with Kennedy, at one point he was he he wants to fight. I think he wants to fight MMA. I think he wants to do kind of dip his toes in that a little bit. But we'll see. I think I think Quincy really, really when his his, his run to the finals, when he his run to the finals really kinda of inspired him. Cause that's his little brother, right? And uh and, and so they work out all the time. Not well all the time, but they of course having Quincy home that whole year, they got to work out more than they ever had. Uh, and so it was just it was just when they got to college that they could they could actually work out together and not get mad at each other and, and, and blow the workout, right? <laughs> so all through growing up, they could, really, they could work out for about 10 minutes before his fist was... Brothers will be strong. brothers. Exactly. So they now they can actually get a, a productive workout in, right? I've been trying to get them to do that for years, but they can they can just know <laughs> the college years they can do that. So so he, that, you know, I think just Quincy's run to the finals, man, in, in that moment, and Kennedy saw that moment, he got, man, if this, you know, I, I can, I, I want to be a part of that. And I want to, I want to chase that one more time. And so that's kind of where he is. So we'll see. All right, we'll bring up what, what, what Spire's looking like here. So here's the website. It's at uh, spireinstitute.org. You click on, we're looking at the Academy pay, you know, drop down. You can see the Academy page where the uh, where wrestling is. You go down here, you yep. get league, get yep. all sorts of information. So if you're curious on what coach Monday is doing here, you can tell me right now, we're building a world-class program. I'm, I'm going to build a program that will be, competing with the top national teams in the country. I've got probably seven or eight kids already signed up for next year that, that's really applied and and I'm looking at. And uh, and so, yeah, the, my, my, my goal is to, is to build a, a national program where we, we're competing with the best out there. And 
And um, again, I'm selling the dream, man. I'm working my butt off to try to build it. And um, so if anybody out there, if you if you want, if you got a kid that's serious about wrestling, serious about their, their academics, um, send them to me, you know, and uh, we'll, we'll get them going, right? So yeah, I'm I'm on this side of it, man. I want to build, I want to build, I want to build champions. One of the last times I remember you showing up on a podcast was with Richard Immel, and I looked down, and that thing was an hour and 45 minutes long, and I can understand why, <laughs> talk, because man. there's so much more I want to want to delve so into much, with man. you. We'll have to do I can, it. I can tell the story, man. At another time, for tell. sure. <laughs> yeah, because Richard's 15 got, minutes for me I now, so right. oh, what yeah, we'll yeah, do yeah. is we'll, we'll get us all together and, and see if we can break a right. record for something. But, Kenny, it's been Absolutely, great catching up man. with you. Uh, best of luck to you with what's going on at, at Spire. And uh, I'll, I'll be keeping an eye on it, and best of luck to the, uh, the those Mondays, yeah. Kennedy and Quincy. Yeah, yeah. And I know another thing too, man, is uh, of course the NCAA NCAA tournament is in Tulsa next year, right? So it's my hometown. All of our kids were born in Tulsa, you know. So so it's their hometown, and so my dad is, is still lives in Tulsa. My family still lives in Tulsa, and so he's so pumped up about it. He's so excited that, that he, he didn't have to go anywhere to watch the, the NCAA tournament. It's like. It's like five minutes from his house. He lives like five, ten, ten minutes from downtown. My dad does. Hmm. And I was out of Tulsa, right? And so we we're so excited to to bring the NCAA tournament to Tulsa, man. He's never been there, and we're just pumped. And so for the boys to be able to, because they missed that opportunity to wrestle together in the NCAA tournament, right? And uh, so to have that opportunity, that's what I think that's what really motivates Kennedy to do that. But to have the boys to to come back and, and wrestle uh, their last year in Tulsa, Oklahoma, is uh is really just a, a, a fascinating thing. So we're praying that it happens. We're praying that it happens. <laughs> well, I'll be praying that it happens too because that means I get to watch it. Yeah, yeah, but we'll have a big, I tell you, we have a big, big party, a big congregation at, at, uh, at, the, at the NCAA tournament this year, this next year. It's right, Tulsa, well, man. <laughs> I'll look I've just flown into it. I, I've never actually know, spent right? any time there. Oh, really? Yeah, Tulsa, just it's a great town. flow into it, going to Stillwater. That's pretty much the only only thing I've it's driven. It's a great through town, it. man. Tulsa, Tulsa's really, really um, have come a long way as far as like the downtown area. I mean, they, it's really a cool, cool little area now. There's a lot, of, a lot of restaurants and some nightlife, and of course, you know, Greenwood is you know two blocks from from downtown. You know, the historic Greenwood, right? Mm-hmm. You know, the other story, nineteen twenty one Greenwood. Yes, I do. Oh, I knew uh, Black Wall Street. Exactly, back Wall Street, right? So we're right there, man. And we'll have, a, matter of fact, we'll have a social, have a, having a social, right on Greenwood uh, on Wednesday night too. So we'll have to invite you to that. It's gonna be really cool. All right, I'll, I'll have to check that one out. That's actually yeah. a story I, I do I do know a little bit about. So yeah, but then my high school is there. I got Booker T. Washington is only like uh, ten minutes from downtown. You know, and my that court, the basketball court is named Kenny Monday Wayman Tisdale Court. Uh, Wayman Tisdale. Wow. I never thought we get a Sacramento Kings reference here. Yeah. Among other places. Wayman Tisdale. Yeah. We grew up together. Wow. Yeah. I think I have his basketball card here somewhere because I used to collect all those cards. I got it. You know, I got it. I had from from like 88 to like 94, man. I had sports cards. Like the bar you can't see behind me is covered in baseball and basketball cards. That's that's my uh, my, my shrine. Wayman's my boy, man. Wayman's my boy. For sure. And so, yeah, that school in my street, that's where I started, I started wrestling at the YMCA, Northside YMCA. And so the street that the YMCA sits on is Kitty Monday Place. And so you get to see my street as well. So. You got a street name after you? I mean, I, I do. <laughs> we got to document this stuff. But uh, again, yeah. we could probably be here for days because I'm just loving hearing you tell some stories, man. Because I, I, you know, we got a great Ray Lewis story. We've got some, yep. we, you know, I've got so many stories here, but uh for now, we'll just have to let you build the program, and we'll, we'll circle back fire, when, when things are rolling, man. Absolutely, man. And uh, hopefully you can get to come out to, you know, the uh, – well, U23 is in June. I don't know if you – the only thing is they got Final X the same weekend. Well, um, I'm in Final X. i got to work on nailing that one yeah. down because uh, cause that, yeah, that's yeah, also Hall of Fame weekend. Honors weekend yep, down in yep. – because that's I something was, I, I was so I was so pissed off when I saw that same <laughs> date, man. I was like, oh, my God, why would you do that the same day as U23s? So, yeah, but that's what it is. 